Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the latest news from Bahrain Television. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, affirmed that the United Nations has always been and always will be the embodiment of noble goals that the international community has agreed upon in an effort to uphold the principles of joint coordination and mutual understanding, as well as respecting international law against all threats to global stability. He has also stressed that the world is currently experiencing a period of unstable political security and economic circumstances, in addition to an, the increasing dangers of terrorism, which commands the development of joint action, as well as maintaining the security and stability of the world order. The Prime Minister also added that it is the UN's responsibility to preserve its ideals, especially the principles of sovereignty and immunity of countries, which would guarantee the stability of international relations. He called upon the international community to undertake advanced measures in order to diffuse tension and relieve people's suffering in countries that experience wars and conflict, in addition to assisting countries to steer their capabilities towards further development. In a message addressed to the international community on the occasion of United Nations Day, which will be celebrated tomorrow, His Royal Highness warned against the retreating role of the UN in treating crises and opposing wars inflicted in various territories that would only endanger human life as well as expose them to the dangers of trafficking and immigration. His Royal Highness urged the international community to create plans that would maintain countries' safety and stability, particularly those in a state of war where thousands of innocent people are killed. He added that the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, is keen on supporting and committing to the rules of joint international action that is based on mutual respect, which brings people together, maintains peace and helps achieve justice, sustainable development and the noble goals of the United Nations. The Prime Minister affirmed the importance of celebrating this occasion as it sheds light on the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of 2030 approved by the UN in 2015. His Royal Highness called the international community to use this occasion as a chance to renew its commitment to the noble goals of the UN and for it to join the efforts of the United Nations in order to maintain peace and stability. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met at Rafah Palace the newly appointed Ambassador of the Kingdom of Thailand to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Chaya Pan Bamrang Fong. His Royal Highness highlighted the development of Bahraini-Thai relations, noting the role of Thailand in supporting cooperation between Asian countries and enhancing their role in the global economy. The Crown Prince affirmed the success of the second Asian Cooperation Dialogue held recently in Thailand, stating Thailand's role in expanding opportunities for cooperation. His Royal Highness expressed condolences to the government and people of Thailand on the late passing of the King Bumibo. He asserted his support to the ambassador in his diplomatic duties, wishing him success in his new role. For his part, the ambassador expressed thanks to His Royal Highness for his interest in enhancing the two countries' relations. Royal Guard Commander Brigadier Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa welcomed at Isa Air Base this evening in the presence of the Royal Guard Special Force Commander Major Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, a number of BDF soldiers from duty force who participated in the Restoring Hope operation in Yemen. During the reception, His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed thanks and appreciation to the soldiers for their loyal efforts supporting the Saudi-led coalition that fights for legitimacy in Yemen, commending their noble and brave sacrifices. The reception was attended by a number of senior BDF officers and the participants' families.
Representative of His Majesty the King for Charity and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the match of Bahrain national team against Vietnam in the quarterfinals of the AFC Under-19 Championship. The Bahrain team lost the match 1-0. His Highness Sheikh Nasser praised the performance of the Bahraini team, wishing them luck in the next match against the Thai team. His Highness Sheikh Nasser praised the performance of the national youth team in the Asian Cup, which reflected the progress of football in Bahrain. His Highness Sheikh Nasser said that the national youth team is the hope for the Bahraini football and its future as it includes a selection of talented young players, underlining the need to develop their skills and abilities and increase their level of experience for the benefits of the future of football in the kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa congratulated the Saudi team for qualifying for the World Cup by reaching the semi finals of the Asian Cup after beating the Iraqi team. Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid Al Khalifa and Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa participated in a peace ceremony held at Schönbrunn Palace in Vienna yesterday in the presence of Archduke Sander von Habsburg and Archduchess Hertha Margaret, as well as the accompanying Bahraini delegation and distinguished guests. The ceremony highlighted the efforts of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, in reinforcing and promoting peace in the world. Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid Al Khalifa delivered a speech in which he conveyed His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's greetings to the attendants. He hailed the noble objectives of the Austrian Association for the Furtherance of Peace and the Flame of Peace Award, stressing that the world faces serious challenges that require uniting all efforts in order to achieve security and stability. He added that granting His Royal Highness the Prime Minister the Flame of Peace Award reinforces Bahrain's position as a model of coexistence and fraternity. He noted that Bahrain is committed to continue working to achieve peace and stability in the region and the world, adding that the Flame of Peace statue which was established in Bahrain National Museum reaffirms that. For their part, Archduke Sandor von Habsburg and Archduchess Hertha Margaret expressed appreciation for His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's efforts in advocating peace as a key factor for sustainable development, wishing the Kingdom and its people further progress and prosperity. The ceremony included musical performances and the organisers introduced Bahrain women's national football team, who are currently in a training camp in Vienna, to the audience. Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid Al Khalifa and Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa greeted the players on the stage, stressing that the players have demonstrated a positive picture of Bahrain conveyed in a message of peace and coexistence between different people. On behalf of the team, Sheikh Adwa bin Khalid Al Khalifa expressed congratulations to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for receiving the Golden Star Award in recognition for his efforts in supporting peace on the international stage. She also thanked Archduke Sander von Habsburg and Archduchess Hertha Margaret, as well as the Austrian Association for the furtherance of peace for their support to Bahrain's training camp in Vienna.
The Shura Council held its second hearing of the opening ceremony of the first session of the fourth legislative term under the chairmanship of Mr Ali bin Salah Al Salah. The session started with the formation of a committee to respond to the royal speech suggested by the council office. The special elections were conducted by forming the council's standing committees, which are Foreign Affairs, Defence and National Security Committee, Services Committee, Finance and Economic Committee, Public Utilities and Environment Committee, and the Legal and Legislative Affairs Committee, in addition to subcommittees. After the formation of the Shura Committees, the Council will carry out its legislative duties according to the Bahraini Constitution. The 2017-2018 public budget came at the top of both the Parliament's Chambers' priority list in the current session. Interior Minister Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa welcomed Indian Home Minister Rajnath Singh at Bahrain International Airport today upon his arrival on an official visit to Bahrain. The two sides discussed security cooperation and coordination of an exchange of expertise and joint work. They also tackled a number of topics related to regional security and stability. During the visit, the first meeting of the Bahraini Indian Security Committee is held as part of the agreement that was signed by the two countries in December 2015 in India. The agreement promotes cooperation in counter-terrorism, organized crime and illegal trafficking of drugs and narcotics, psychotropic substances and precursor chemicals. It also includes cooperation in fighting terrorism-related crimes, terrorism financing, illegal migration, forging of IDs and passports for illegal use. The Indian Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to the Interior Minister for the warm welcoming hailing the historical, strong and developing ties between the two friendly countries. The 7th Gulf School Theatres Festival, under the theme, A Gulf That Brings Us Together, a theatre that unites us, has been inaugurated in the presence of the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali al Noemi. The General Manager of the Arab Bureau of Education for the Gulf States, that's ABEX, Dr. Ali al Khani, and educational delegations from the GCC. The festival will include a number of school plays and will celebrate a number of golf school plays elite who will host intellectual seminars where they will discuss their experiences and visions. During his speech at the opening ceremony, Dr. al Noemi welcomed the audience to Bahrain and affirmed his pride in hosting this event in the Kingdom for this year. He stated that this festival enhances GCC joint cooperation in the fields of education, arts and culture. He pointed out the Ministry's keen interest in supporting theatrical activities amongst its efforts to implement various school activities for students, which coincides with the expansion of citizenship and human rights promoting schools project. The minister noted the positive role of theatre in reinforcing the students' Islamic and patriotic values and developing their linguistic skills. He lauded the efforts of ABEX and the Arab Theatre Authority as the main supporters of the event. For his part, ABEX general manager delivered a speech in which he commended Bahrain's support of the joint Gulf educational initiatives. The representative of ATA, Ghanem Al Ghanem, affirmed that this festival is considered a chance to exchange educational, artistic and cultural expertise between Gulf countries. A number of Gulf theatre pioneers were honoured, including student Munira Al Shumeli from Al Aruba Girls Elementary School, who is visually impaired for her contribution in executing a school play in Braille. The Ministry of Justice and Islamic Affairs and Waqaf's Judicial and Legal Studies Institute, with the cooperation of the Supreme Council for Women, have organized a seminar titled Meeting of Pioneers and Hopefuls, attended by the Minister of Justice and Islamic Affairs and Waqaf Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa. The seminar brought together a number of Bahraini women pioneers who are the first in the field of legal and forensic work in their generation of working women. That was in the frame of events associated with the Bahraini Women Day this year that particularly celebrated women in the legal and forensic field. SCW Vice President Sheikh Mariam bin Hassan Al Khalifa affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain was progressing towards empowering women in the legal and forensic fields with a support of political will and a society open towards educating and supporting women. She also expressed her optimism towards achieving more success in both fields.
The vice president drew attention to the fact that Bahraini society, especially Bahraini men, encourage women to educate themselves and enter challenging majors such as law and legal studies. She also explained that there is no constitutional or legal obstacle that impedes with women's progress, for she has equality with men and able to develop legislative systems and reach the highest positions in legal and forensic institutions in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Chief Executive Officer of King Hamid University Hospital, Major General Dr. Salman bin Ayatala Al Khalifa, has announced the inauguration of HOPE, an advanced health information system developed by Bahraini staff in a short amount of time and at a low cost of 20,000 dinars. He also stated in a press conference that the hospital has signed a contract with a foreign company in 2011 in order to develop a comprehensive healthcare system in the span of two years and at a cost of 5,600,000 Bahraini dinars. Dr. Al Khalifa added that after the trial of other systems, it was decided on the 25th of August 2015 to initialize the implementation of the health information system and for it to be applied afterwards to remaining departments. He also affirmed that the aim of this system is to create a single medical file for each citizen that would be accessible in all hospitals with the patient's consent, thus creating easy access to patient's medical history. The Major General Doctor expressed King Hamid's hospital's readiness to implement this system in other hospitals, asserting the marketability of the system locally and internationally. He also noted that Salmania Hospital praised the system and that Mohammed bin Khalifa Cardiac Center, as well as other private hospitals, have shown interest to adopt the Hope Health Information System. Assistant Undersecretary Policies and Housing Services Dr. Khalid al Haydan stated that the Ministry of Housing has finished distributing the certificates of merit to beneficiaries of the second stage of the Northern City Units distribution in the frame of its timetable to distribute 3,200 additional housing units in fulfilment of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa's decree. Assistant Undersecretary noted that the distribution of certificates of merit represents the first stage of the housing project's distribution procedures, where the second stage consists of electronic withdrawals of the project and progress percentages. Marking World Day of Polio, the Ministry of Health affirmed that it had not recorded any cases of polio malitis since 1993. The Ministry affirmed that it follows the Global Polio Eradication and Endgame Strategic Plan, noting that Bahrain's achievements are evident locally, regionally and internationally. It added that it has followed the latest plans and programs and provided the most effective preventative services to eliminate the various infectious diseases. The Epidemiology and Surveillance Programme, which aims to detect all cases that may be infected with polio through taking the necessary lab tests, is one of the solutions that the Ministry is successfully applying with its efforts, and they have resulted in an increase in the percentage of polio vaccinations of more than 95% from 1975 until now. Bahrain is in full throttle in October every year when it comes to breast cancer awareness programs. Different institutions, whether they're medical, educational or even motorcycle clubs, dedicate effort, money and time to make people more aware of this disease. More now in this report with Sarah Albareik. The Harley-Davidson's owner group, commonly known as Hogs, took part in a charity ride in support of the cancer ward at Salmania Hospital. We are here today to mark the Breast Cancer Awareness Month um, to uh, honor those who lost their lives uh, to the disease and to celebrate, celebrate our cancer survivors and hopefully to promise a cancer-free world. Um, as you know, uh, breast cancer is the most common cancer in females and it's the leading cause of cancer death in young women between 20 to 40. Uh, it's a shared responsibility between individual and community to join the fight in cancer, against cancer. So multiple social organizations are needed to combat the disease from different angles. Uh, 
I would like to take the opportunity today to thank the Harley Davidson groups of bikers who decided to dedicate their right uh, to the breast cancer patients. Um, among the bikers, I'm sure there will be cancer survivors. Some have decided to join the right to take the physical challenge. This event, uh, as well as other awareness events, are very important for many reasons. First of all, we are trying to convey the message for our patients that they are not alone. We care, we do care, and we are here to help. We are trying to reach the young women everywhere to give them the insight and the tools to be aware, uh, to feel uh, safe and supported, and uh, to empower them with the knowledge that the breast cancer can be prevented. The Bahrain chapter's early morning Friday ride on the 21st of October saw some 30 riders and their passengers on pink decorated bikes wearing the chapter's breast cancer awareness t-shirts in order to raise awareness about breast cancer in the kingdom. It is a pleasure for the Hog chapter Bahrain to be here and to get the opportunity to help. Uh, we do yearly, since many, many years, uh, the cancer awareness campaign and do rides. We organize a special ride meeting in the morning. We are decorating our bikes and uh, have a good ride together. We have a big community with a lot of ladies as well. And I'm sure everybody from our uh, members had cancer patients in his family. So this is very important for us, one of the annual charity rides that we do. Every year we have two uh, charity rides to help handicapped children. This is uh, ever after every eat holidays and in October the breast cancer and in between we will see if we have any requests or any ideas then we will work on that. More charity events are on their way from the Harley Davidson group but first they have to finish their third rally taking place on the 10th, 11th and 12th of November. Spaces for Bahraini startups will be available to showcase their goods in an event designed by the Bahraini Hogs chapter for the Bahraini community. Bikers from all GCC and even from Europe are coming here. Now this year it's a MENA rally so we will also see people from MENA, North Africa and um, it's always a, a great place to meet, to network together, also for the ladies of Harley, which I am the officer for here in Bahrain, and I am welcoming everybody. And um, for sure there is opportunities for charity there as well, and to promote, to find people who are in need for charity. This is Sarah Break for Bahrain News Center.